fall from a million red cliffs. I actually can't believe this is real. They were leaving. Mixed feelings about it. One hand, it's gonna be nice that we'll be able to heal Titus a lot better in Oregon. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of look forward to seeing Pacific Northwest again. After all, it's home. There's Mari. Let's pretend she's not comfortable. Titus is over there, hanging out. Hi, right, buddy. There's Una. They all have their beds and their designated spots, and it's so cute. Nice chilling. And I think we also resolved this problem of Yuna putting her head here because now it's got some height and Kimari likes being this close but she's comfy at the same time so I think this is gonna be a good trip so three days let's go we're first going to have coffee we're going to visit our favorite spot here in this region that we've discovered while we're here it's called River Rock Cafe such a nice little place beautiful overlook We've eaten there and had coffee there quite a few times so we're going to go there one more time and then we're going for a hydrotherapy session for Titus because it will be a while before we can go to the next one so on the way out we're going to Santa Clara and we'll go see Monet one more time for Titus's hydro and physical therapy and after that we are off to Eli miss this cabin so much it was it's like a second home to us we've been here already twice and it's the best cabin we've ever stayed in in all of our airbnb years this cabin is just incredible the host is amazing she's just a sweetheart of a host and just a beautiful cabin with all the amenities we needed and we'll miss it a lot we'll miss it a lot a lot but maybe we'll be back one day we'll see So cute, I love their beds in here. What's, what's Yuna doing? Yuna's all the way in the back, she's chilling. Kimari's looking out the window. Titus, you ready for hydro? You wanna go? <laughs> you go, boy, Titus. Let's go, buddy. You're getting tired? Yes, I know. So, and you say that they have a lot of energy. So doing this kind of work with them, the mental stimulation can get them almost as tired as like a six mile walk. Because yeah. it, it really makes them work and focus. Mm -hmm. Just like for us, if we're you know doing math problems, it's exhausting. The brain. Yeah, the brain yeah. works. We've been doing that actually Good. at home, but for some reason it doesn't, it doesn't last very long. They'll be tired for about 10 minutes after. Done. Look at you. Oh, wow. wow, all four. Very nice. That's even more than I expected for today. Good boy. <laughs> dinner first this way they have time to digest before we go to sleep what do you think 
That's a good idea. Yeah, you guys want to eat first? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a yes. Well, we got all we got the raw food in a cooler right here, ready to go, all cut up. It's frozen. I wonder if it's even gonna be ready. So I'm gonna take off my jacket, and it's dinner time, guys. Okay, lesson learned. We bring our own pillows. Jason and I both love super flat pillows and no matter where we go, the pillows are thick and we can't sleep well at night because once you start sleeping on flat pillows, you just can't go back to thick ones. So now we bring those travel pillows with us everywhere. I've just got super soft microfiber sheets and they're flat so they don't take up that much space. Pillows everywhere we go. Gotta get these kids to come here and lay down properly. Okay, lay down, lay down, lay down, lay down. I know it's not home, but you could, oh, good girl, you know. Titus, lay down, buddy. You could do it. Lay down, buddy, all the way, lay down. You're so cute, lay down, buddy. Lay down, all the, oh, good boy. Come on, Mach, you could do it. Lay down, princess. She's like, uh, if I don't look at you, you're not seeing me. Lay down, mama. Mashi, lay down. That's such a good girl. All right, now I can make dinner, okay? Of course, got Titus monkey here. He loves throwing that monkey around. And these amazing new ceramic bowl from our top, top 10 products video. This is fantastic. And it's protected, so this is great. Oh. So I prep this. Kimari, lay down, mama. Kimari, lay. I know you're impatient, lay down. Titus, you too, lay down, buddy. Okay, we gotta check you guys again. Lay down. See, no matter what, you always have to stay on point with the training. You can't stop. Even though I'd rather just sit down and watch a movie right now. Come on, Mom. You could do it. Good eye contact, but... Come on, Mari. Lay down. Lay down. No. So difficult. Good girl. That's a good girl. Stay there. So yeah, a tip for you guys when you're traveling, especially the beginning of the trip or if it's a short trip, just cooler. Cut up the raw food before you leave. Super roll it in aluminum foil. And I also cut the top here so it's easy to unroll and unfold. So there you go. And then, as you can tell, it's still somewhat frozen, but I can get through it with the spoon. I know, you gotta wait. So this is going to be a bit more difficult for the squad because they're gonna have to wait a little bit before they can eat it, because it's not very good to feed them frozen food. It should be a bit thought out. So that will be a bit of a challenge for them to wait when their food is out. But hey, it's traveling conditions, so they'll have to bear with certain things, right? But there it is, their natural healthy food. Another alternative, freeze-dried, right? Freeze -dried. Yeah, freeze-dried food by a different brand than Small Batch. But I think Small Batch just came out with their own too. We love Small Batch. You know, you have a lot of stories to tell. But freeze dried is really good for traveling too. The really cool thing about traveling and doing this again and again is that you always get better. <laughs> yeah? What does that mean? What does that mean, Kimari? It means that you're gonna lay down and that's a good girl. You know what I want. But you always get better. You get more efficient, you learn things. I mean, I'm thinking back years ago when we were traveling. God, it felt like such a hot mess compared to today. 
and I'm sure that if when we look back at this video two years from now we're gonna have learned so much more because it's just all about practice when you practice something you get better and better so this is Titus's Chinese medicine that Dr. Keith prescribed for his ligaments and this is the good stuff the kelp supplement that we have listed on our Amazon store so this is fantastic to include in your dog's diet good boy all right nice eye contact mama good girl Machi lay down Machi lay down it's very hard for you today huh so difficult good training good eye contact mama good girl they're ceramic which means no rust nothing bad happens to them you have to be a little bit more careful than with metal bowls but they're great to clean and with these cool silicone things on the bottom they just never slip and they stay in place no matter what kind of ceramics they eat in right mamas lick to clean kimari was that delicious there's no more good morning guys it is freezing it's eight degrees outside it's not a pretty view because we're in a parking lot but look at this everything is white the windshield so is frozen icicles on the windshield the squad is of course super happy with the cold they don't mind it they're back in their comfort seat you know you ready for your day the really cool thing about it being so cold is that we have a freezer in the back of the car <laughs> pretty much because it's eight degrees i haven't tightened them all the straps yeah sorry babe <laughs> good thing you mentioned that but we have the squad's frozen raw food in the back of the car on this little not rig but this little basket morning i can't think yet <laughs> and we have eight rolls chubs of frozen food of course it's inside this special cooler thing but it's still not going to last for three days right but with it being so cold outside it's awesome everything is frozen so frozen that we can we couldn't actually feed the squad this morning so we're thawing it out right now and in about five hours we'll do a stop and feed them but it's great. It just makes me want to do more winter camping and more winter trips because you have a freezer with you at all times. And we're polar bears, so we love that. We all like the cold. I'm not bitching about the cold. I just don't like it for no reason. But to enjoy the nature and be in the snow and the minute you start hiking, you get so warm anyways. We usually end up hiking with a long sleeve shirt and that's it because it's so warm. You get Your body gets warm from hiking. But this is great stuff. Anyways, we are on the hunt of finding coffee. Tiny cups. That's fine. Okay, so where are we going? Bend? Oh my god, we're going to bend. <laughs> <laughs> We're going back to Oregon. Wow. All right. We should put on our PNW track just to get in the mood in the zone. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our PNW Spotify playlist. Oh yeah, you guys. If you want to follow our playlists, all our playlists, we have different moods on Spotify. I'll link it in the description of this video. It's awesome. Oh, look at this. This is why La Quinta is amazing. <laughs> look at this cat. In the window. This is so cute. Probably knows there's three huskies in here. I just saw a sign that says the loneliest road in America. What is it? Is this 60? Yeah, it's 60. Yeah, 
the loneliest road in America. I think that's funny. And I was actually telling JC that it feels like we're driving in some post-apocalyptic environment because it just looks so eerie. Like eerie, desolate, freezing cold. It's just it's such an interesting experience. I love these experiences though. You experience this once in a lifetime, every place you go. We're actually contemplating yesterday maybe we should just live in a van <laughs> a big van with the entire husky squad what do you guys think about that idea we thought it was pretty cool because we can just go anywhere we really don't like to be tied down to one place i feel like life gets so mundane it's always the same it's just about simple life experiences but moving around kind of like how our ancestors moved around a lot too and even if it's simple things like this, just these desolate, loneliest roads in the country, it's, it's just cool experiencing that. We're probably never going to be here again, but it's just, it's really nice. You don't forget those moments. Okay, so now I'm going to edit some pictures for the Husky Squad from our time in Utah. There's some beautiful photos we still haven't shared yet, so I'm going to edit some of that. Leave a comment here if you guys follow us on Instagram. I'm very curious if you're here and if you're on Instagram or on Facebook. Our Facebook presence is quite small, but we have great, great community and great people on Facebook. But on Instagram, we stop posting every single day because we don't want this to become like a, a burden, a requirement. We want to share pictures and, and things that inspire us and inspire you guys, and they're beautiful. Right, Mama? They're so adorable, these kids. Oh my gosh, I got kisses. But yes, we don't wanna just post it being like a chore. We post every single day. So we usually post on Instagram about two to three times a week of things that we feel we want to share with you, things that we feel inspires you, motivates you, just makes you have an amazing day. You know or just sharing some thoughts it's not just about putting out content just to be like a content machine you know we're not really about that even when it comes to our YouTube videos granted we want to post a lot more YouTube videos than we have we've just had a crazy year we didn't have a lot of time but still we're not going to be that type of account that posts videos every day just to post videos and they're really boring and useless i'm not saying people do that but that's what it would feel like to us if we were to just post content post videos every single day we want it to be beneficial fun inspiring helpful you know those kind of videos so we hope in 2019 not we hope but one of our goals is to have at least two videos per month and quality videos per month and in the past year 2018 we had eight videos the whole year but we really want to have more than that so we're probably going to quadruple our content this year and we have a lot in the pipes already that we filmed so it's now just about putting it out for you guys so anyways that's just a little update on our social media experience and plans for 2019 frozen I don't even know if it's going to defrost much because it's that cold what should we do should we let it sit more in the sun is it really that frozen it's not that frozen but it's kind of like having ice cream is that a yeah. problem for huskies 
<laughs> well, it's definitely a lot of ice cream. What do you think? So wait. I don't know. You, you wait want, a little bit. You guys want ice cream or you want normal food? Mm. Wait ice, a little bit. Ice meat. Ice meat. <laughs> ice popsicles. Meat popsicles. Meatsicles. Meat cream. <laughs> Ew, that does not sound good. <laughs> you guys want meatsicles? Who's cute? Huh? Kimar, you can't float out. Kimar, you're floating out. Get back. Get back. Get back. You know what you gotta do. Okay. Get Tyrus back. doesn't fit anymore. Can't go back. They're all in one dog bed. I don't know if you realize that. Hey, 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 no, not yet, not yet. Shh. Life is not ending, you're going to eat. Thank goodness they kind of stopped shedding. <laughs> <laughs> she has anxiety. She's starting to get anxious, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that's why, that's the other drawback of letting them wait, because I feel like they just get more and more worked up, which is not a good thing. But it also teaches them patience, so it's a double whammy. But this is the coolest setup, you guys, since we're out here. I wanted to show you this. I don't, what is this called? A basket? Yeah, a hitch basket. A hitch basket. And then we have this waterproof thing in here that expands pretty good up high. In here is a box that has very good insulating material for the for the pup's food. <laughs> we have a bunch of rolls of the pup's food in here. So it keeps it cool and then some other stuff out here. So it's a really good spot. Everything has been super cold because it's freezing out here. But it's been so cold that nothing is melting. So we have to wait. You know, I was just telling JC, it's so funny because I think, I don't know, I may be wrong, but I think that Huskies can actually tolerate colder food easier because of their breed. When we lived in Wisconsin and we went to a huge dog park, Kimari found a frozen deer leg and they just, oh my gosh, they were so happy about that. And it just makes me think of animals in the wild that live through the cold temperatures like wolves and they, they tolerate these conditions they probably bury their catch and they eat it later and it's freezing it's frozen but this is very challenging for the squad because having to wait that extra time it's it's a lot of learning for them and it takes patience and practice to be able to handle it because the longer they wait for their food it usually gets more excite like more excitement build up and more anxiety but that's where the challenge comes in to train them and not allow them to get to that state and have them relax and not feed them while they have anxiety. Feed them 
when they're calm so it's good it's good practice for them to be calm look at them you guys are doing good hmm? round two was not as easy but this is getting easier good babies all right here's Kimari's last plate last piece of the plate put on this thing for you. Stay. Stay, Titus. <laughs> Titus is going to have his first walk. With his braces. He's acting like a little brat right now. This is how we get to go faster, okay? I know. Life is so hard. Can't go without the brace. Come on, buddy. Do you even know we're going back to Oregon because of you? Huh? To help you out, buddy? That's why we're going back to Oregon. And you're complaining the planet right now. I know. We're almost done. Strap, strap, strap. Yeah? There you go. There you go. I know. It's terrible. I know. <laughs> he wants to go so bad with me. <laughs> Alright, I'm almost ready, Titus. I know. Your dreams are coming true in one minute. Ready, now I've got to carry you. Oh, he's excited, but look at him. Can't wait to touch the ground. So it's 8:40. We can go maximum until 9 o'clock for Titus. Let's go hiking. Come on. Wanna go hike? Let's go hike hike. Come on. Let's go hike hike. <laughs> It is that cold. <laughs> it's really freezing and we're up so early. Cool. Yes, that would be awesome. And we are going to Dutch Bros. The squad love Dutch Bros. They always get treats here. <laughs> hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All three of them out there. This is a good way to start my morning. <laughs> how are you, man? Good, how are you? Good. Hi. That's Yuna, and that's Kimari, and Titus is the <laughs> Oh, dude, I need me some dogs like this. If you guys ever bring <laughs> dogs, come back through and be like, hey, we just had a litter of puppies. <laughs> I will buy them up, you, no doubt in my mind. They're very soft. What was that? No. Yeah, I just show many of them in the, in, in the, in the pound. Where? What? Yeah, because they're so cute 
when they're puppies and people just like buy them everywhere and then they, and then they just can't handle them. Because yeah. huskies are completely different than, than other breeds. They're so active, you gotta get, you yeah, gotta take you them gotta hiking all the time. Yeah. That's my worry, like I have a dog, but like when I get home, I always take him out. And like yeah. we always go on walks and we go, I go longboarding with them. You guys have a great day. Totally you Thank nice you. To Husky squad. Husky squad. Yes, sir. Thank you. Around, all right? See ya. Darcy. Dutch Bros Coffee, it's been a while. It's been a long while <laughs> since Dutch Bros Coffee. We like Dutch Bros, good stuff. We like Dutch Bros because they get treats all the time. I know. And we like Dutch Bros because they love our dogs, so it's always fun to drive by Dutch Bros because they're ha happy when they see the squad. Anywho, so we're on our way to Shevlin Park. Shevlin Park is, how do you describe it? It has great memories, that's for sure. It's it's one of the first videos we filmed for Husky Squad a bit over two years ago. I link it here on top. So you can go check that out. It's such a magical place and it's right at the edge of Bend and it's a great neighborhood park and it just has so many trails. So if you're stopping by this area, just stopping by, I really recommend to go check that out. So Titus last night did about 20 minutes with his two braces on. I got him on my lap, both braces ready to go. So today we'll do about half an hour or so in the morning with him with the two braces. And then later on, if things go well, we may add a little bit more time in the afternoon probably before we arrive to Portland. Yeah, are you coming to give me kisses? Oh, you're such a good boy. How come you're here, Titus? I'm surprising. He's here in the front. He's usually in the back. So yeah, that's our plan. Coffee, trails, just how we like it. And there's Kimari doing her thing. Yuna is somewhere checking things out. Huh? And we're on our way for our short morning hike. How's that coffee? <laughs> it's hitting the spot. Oh, yeah. So McDonald's coffee versus Dutch Bros coffee. Well, it's definitely better than McDonald's. Oh, finally something with over McDonald's. <laughs> I never said McDonald's is better than it's only when there's exactly. nothing around. Yeah? It's the the best of the worst alternatives. Oh wow. Yeah, that's not a very good uh product then. It's fogging up, it's cold. Alright. I'm shutting down. I'll see you at the park. That's how it goes before we get out the car. We're really excited. <laughs> That's Titus, the loudest one. Titus. Now I have a mission. To put these braces on. Let's see if we can do this. I hate doing this in the car, but hey, that's the only option we have right now. This is one of our favorite trees in this side of Oregon. It's called a ponderosa pine. It's so beautiful. It has this great texture. This is how you recognize them. It has this great texture, dual texture. It looks like a freshly baked cookie. Yes, and it actually it smells like freshly baked cookies when the sun hits it, but right now it's so cold and the sun is not out. And you can't really smell it. But these trees are one of our favorite trees in Oregon. And this is obviously in Central Oregon, not on the west side. This is in the drier, more arid environment, but it's just so, so beautiful. So I figured out, I figured out this key for Titus 
using his brace properly because the injury is different now with two, you know, him being in two braces, so it's a little bit different. So I figured out that I actually have to pace him on a slower pace, otherwise he does a lot of hopping. But if he walks slow, then he uses the legs more properly. So that's the goal, slowing him down now. food, that's for sure. Everything looks amazing. We're ready to eat. Just had to film for you guys how cute Kimari is. See, this is the perfect spot that I want to sit in. And that's where she's at. She's enjoying the view comfortably from her seat. Everybody's happy. Thank you. I think Yuna's curled up in a ball. She's She's not been very happy because she wanted to come so close and forward and I don't feel that it's safe. So I had to keep kind of pushing her back. So now she's, she's not sulking, but she's just sleeping she's back there. She's taking a nap. <laughs> she just can't handle being far away from us, which is really nice, but we have to be very cautious. And I know that a lot of, a lot of people have asked us you know, how come we bonded so close with the Husky squad? Why are they so attached? I think the answer to that is the amount of time, quality time that we spent with them. And it all changed even more when we started doing things dedicated for them, like going camping with a purpose of going camping with them. It's nothing like sleeping in a tent with your dog. They, they love that. I don't know how people can keep their dog outside while being, you know, while being separate sleeping in the tent on your own there's nothing like snuggling up in the tent together but that's when the bond really changed and usually yes you know huskies any dog doesn't really like to be hugged but it's not really the hug that's the problem it's because you don't have a connection imagine a stranger comes up to you and just starts hugging you or someone that you don't have that connection with that's a friend but just starts hugging the heck out of you yes you're, you know you're not ready for that you haven't developed that friendship and that's why especially with huskies and some other breeds probably too they don't have that want and desire for your cuddles and for closeness is because you don't have that 
relationship with them but we've built such a strong connection with them that they want the cuddles <laughs> Kimari wants her daily hugs Yuna is the one that's kind of like not she wants it but she has a threshold and we respect it Titus can't get enough of his cuddles they all really really like it in their own way it's not good to force it on them you work on the connection and building that connection and after that they want it they don't leave you alone like two nights ago I think it was we we're in one of the Lakitas and it was too dark I wasn't gonna turn the camera on but they had a whole room beds everything all the space to run around and I had to do some stuff on the laptop and they were literally wrapped around our legs they, they have to be super super close as close as they can because we've built that connection so don't force the hugs just work on the relationship and the closeness give them what they need nothing bonds you more than being outdoors with your dog and get, having their needs met and the rest of it just comes from their side you'll see you don't even have to ask for it they come and get it and it's interesting because for example Yuna she loves affection but she adores affection from her daddy <laughs> she's a total daddy's girl Jane sees everything to her she likes my affection but she's a bit stingier on on the amount of kisses that I get but JC forget it the ears go back in the cutest way and yeah she comes and gets her cuddles now Titus is another story he's a mama's boy he just can't stop kissing me I have to stop him or he'll make my mouth sore because <laughs> my not my mouth but my lips because he just can't stop kissing me he wants the cuddles so they all have their own preference not preferences but who they're bonded with in a different way like titus loves jc just in a different way than he loves me and expresses it differently and the same with kimari kimari kind of floats between both of us but she has her way of hugging jc is a normal part of our daily life on kimari's end with me she hugs me too but with me she'll just come and sit down most of the time have proper head into me which is so cute like she wants me to hug her from her face but with daddy it's just a full-on hug every time so just some tips for you guys to build that bond and that strong connection with your dog and be patient it takes years just like any other relationship to get there he said he's sweetie she got the best view in the house right now love this view there's a snow guys check it out Look at those trees, look at those trees. There's something special about home, Pacific Northwest, the gloomy, danky, wet, moody forest. There's just nothing like it. You have you have to love this type of environment to live here. And then if you do, you become addicted, I think. Definitely an addiction. No matter where we go, for some reason, whenever we come back and we see these trees and we see this environment and feel it in it, it feels like home. This is home. The big trees and just this wet, lush, wild environment. It's our favorite place on earth. when your dog is injured and that's what we just bumped into with Titus. 
So this is not the first time we've had an experience like this, but this was just very shocking because we are back in Portland, obviously. And the reason why we came back here, if you guys have been watching all the previous vlogs about Titus's ACL recovery, you know that we, were, we came back to Portland, Oregon because we have all our resources very close to home and we can get Titus's therapy from hydro on the treadmill to cold laser to land therapy to fitness and also be close to our holistic vet who is fantastic and also be able to take the squat swimming and Titus swimming to help him recover faster. Been here for a couple of days and we've been working with one location for Titus's therapy and things have been going very well. Titus has made amazing progress, which we'll film for you soon. Well, hopefully, if it's still good. <laughs> but he's been making such great progress using his new braces, um, taking taking walks. We've been working with him so well. He's he was doing fantastic with up to 20 minutes in the treadmill now, and just seeing overall amazing progress in his energy and his overall happiness and everything. But there's this one that that does hydrotherapy laser and all of that here in Portland that we really wanted to go to because they came recommended and on top of that they had really great reviews but they were busy so we couldn't get an appointment right away so we had to wait till today till we can finally go right so we're happy we can finally go we were so happy to be there we get there and it was supposed to be where they got all the records from everybody we've been working with and listening to me as a dog mom i know what titus has been doing i know his progress i showed her the video which i'll put a clip here how terrible titus was doing when he first got injured and she can see that he's actually walking and using his leg although not bearing full weight but he is using his injured leg and he's been making amazing progress I didn't expect this, what she does, she puts him down on the ground. First of all, her anxiety level is like, is so bad that her fingers are just like, her fingers and her body and everything is shaking and she's got this energy that I can't handle. You get where I'm going with this? <laughs> that is how her energy was. And anyone that has that, that, that type of energy physically, they don't have the calm energy to heal. So that was already a shocker to me, but I was kind of pushing it aside because hey, she has such great reviews and all these different things, so let me be patient. What she does, puts it down on the ground, takes his leg that's recovering, and does again that drawer movement and all of that, that usually is done to diagnose if it's an ACL injury. That's already been done a long time ago. And then when you start messing with it again, it just makes things worse. She did it so badly that Titus cried out. And that's going back to where we started. And she, her bedside manner was horrible. Everything was terrible. The staff was cold, treated, her, treated Titus like another chicken on the conveyor belt. It was the worst feeling ever. And on top of that, she was about to go and do the same drawer movement exam and all of that shuffling and, and hurting him to the leg Titus has been healed for five years. At that point, I caught myself, I was like, I don't care if she's a doctor and whoever the heck she is, but she's a mad woman. Her energy is not normal. She has a ton of anxiety. She's not listening to me as a dog parent. She doesn't care about anything that I'm trying to tell her, just like every other fantastic facility I've been working with so far. I told her, no, I am not comfortable with you examining my dog's leg that has been just fine for five years. And I was trying to explain to her that Titus is super active and he's been blazing trails and doing all these amazing things, but she didn't even care to listen. So that's a problem that we have today with many of our doctors, whether they're veterinarians or they're regular doctors that are dealing with people, you almost feel like you have to battle them instead of them being your ally and being your support system. Of course you want to hear their professional opinion. That's why they're, you're there, you know? But there's a huge difference in being your ally versus being a complete ridiculous person. So essentially, she just may have messed up all the work we've been doing for six weeks with Titus and all the progress we've been making with Titus. She may have essentially just torn that down to ground zero. 
I, I can't even explain how I'm feeling right now. I had to step out the car. Can't be an exotitis right now because my energy is not good. He's waiting with the squad in the car. I have to have my coffee for a minute just to wind this down. The moral of the story, if you're going to a doctor, whether it's for yourself or your dog, and they're making you uncomfortable and they treat you, excuse me, like shit, don't put up with it. The minute I stopped her from examining Titus, the jitters got even worse. Her whole body was shaking and she was very uncomfortable because I bet there's been no one before that told her, I'm not comfortable with you examining and hurting my dog to a body part that's been perfectly fine for a long time and tearing it again. You don't have to put up with that. Whether it's a human doctor or a veterinarian, you have to go with your intuition. My gut feeling was boiling and when I realized that I had to stop her, I did. And we're going to go back to the other facility that's here in Portland that we've been going a few times to work with them. And we're much happier with that facility. I really miss the Wolf Center in Utah. Oh my gosh, Mene, Anita, the Wolf Center. You guys, can I just transport you here, please? <laughs> you guys are amazing. I really wish we could work with them again in Utah, but we're here because all the amenities are closer and we'll, we'll figure this out. We'll definitely figure it out. Right now, I don't know what yet. We have to gather my thoughts, but we'll get through this. I just will monitor Titus and get him some rest, do more of the hot and cold compresses, which I'll show you guys in the next video. But yeah, don't take crap from people. And there's always, a second way. It's not one way or the highway. Oh, on top of that, she was trying to push us in that we have to do surgery. We didn't even work with this dog. You didn't even care to get the other the dog's record. You didn't even care to see how he's behaving. You tore his leg again, obviously. We did something that made him cry. And then you're saying that you have to do surgery. Even Dr. Keith said that we can see how Titus is doing in his recovery naturally in a holistic way and he's been making such amazing progress that it makes no sense that she should have said that. If this wouldn't be a ridiculous world of lawsuits and all these different things, I would blast them full on who they are. But honestly guys, all I can say, whatever you are in the world, just pay attention to those things. If the gut says that you are not being treated right, your dog is not being treated right, don't put up with it. Just because they have a white jacket on, it doesn't mean that they're perfect. No one is perfect. I'll see you guys in the next video.